and Matt O'Dell is going to explain how I can use a simple 10 amp lighting switch in order to control multiple loads. In other words, we turn up at a factory, there's one or two switches at each end of the factory itself. Yeah. We turn them on and every single light or every single load in the factory actually turns on. Is that correct, Matt? Yep, yeah, that's right. So what you've got in your hand is a simple um, a switch that you'll see in a domestic property. They're rated at about 10 amps. Um, we're going to have two of them in this case. Um, we've obviously got our distribution board. We have the key figure, which is the contactor. And then we have our multiple loads. In this case, three banks of, say, fluorescent lighting. Each one of these could be rated much higher than what the rating of the switch is, but one switch will be able to turn on all of these all of these loads quite easily. Make it the key element in this actual video presentation, the, the contactor, contactor, and you're gonna show us how we're actually gonna control the coil within the contactor, yes. and yeah. that's gonna be switched via the two switches, two-way switched in yes. the factory unit, yep. in order to turn on multiple heavy drawing loads, yeah. is that right? Yeah, definitely. Let's see that next then. So, let's start with the four-way, three-phase distribution board. So, like I said, it's a three-phase board, so you've got your main switch with your L1, L2, and L3 terminals. They can be the old, the old colors, either red, yellow, and blue, or the new colors, brown, black, and gray. And then we have our outgoing terminals, L1, L2, L3, etc. We have our neutral terminal, and we also have our earth terminal. Now, we're not gonna talk too much about the earth in on this one today, um, just because it can make the board a lot more messy. We're just gonna concentrate on the neutral terminals and obviously the, um, the line terminals, the live terminals. So let's go with the two-way switching. So we're gonna have a circuit breaker and we can take that from any of the spaces there. We're just gonna go onto L1 here. Let's rate that at, let's say six amps. And we're going to take a line conductor through to the common of one of the switches. We're then going to go from the outgoing, so either L1 or L2 for the strappers. This is the normal way of wiring up a two-way lighting circuit, like in conduit and singles. From the outgoing side of this switch, we're going to take that all the way through to the contactor. And in particular, I'm going to take that into the terminal, which is labelled A1. All contactors have a coil, and they all have two terminals, A1 and A2. It doesn't matter if you take the line conductor to either or, but I always prefer just to take it to the A1 terminal. We have then have the A2 terminal, and from there we come back, and we come down into the neutral terminal. So as you can see, we've got a six amp breaker that is controlling a two-way switching for the lighting circuit, but it's actually controlling the contactor. It's actually controlling the coil of the contactor. Um, at this point, I thought I'd like to bring Joe Robinson in to maybe talk about the science behind how the coil in the contactor works. So then, I brought Joe Robinson in. Um, Joe, we've got our, so far, we've got our two-way switching that mm -hmm. operates the coil of the contactor. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the A1 terminal and the A2. At the moment, I've got the line conductor coming into the A1 and the neutral into A2. That's how I yeah. always do it, but I don't suppose it matters. Uh, technically, no, because uh, it's uh, an AC supply, so uh, there's no uh, positive or negative here. Um, what's really nice about this uh, installation here, what we've got here is we're seeing electrical science and principles in action. We're yeah. seeing a, a real life application of how electricity can be applied. So one of the effects of electricity is that as it passes through a conductor, it generates a magnetic field around the conductor. Yeah. Inside the contactor, we've got that conductor wrapped into a coil, 
and that intensifies the magnetic field and makes it much stronger. So when this is energized, when it's turned on, electricity flows through the coil, a magnetic field appears around here, and passing through the middle of that coil, we have a metal armature that is uh, connected to the contacts inside the contactor. Yep. And when that's energized, the magnetic field appears, it attracts the metal uh, uh, armature inside the contactor yeah. and it will close those switches which means okay. that now we will have a contact from one side of the contactor to the other. To the, other. Uh, the only other thing that we need to think about is that when we de-energize this circuit obviously we want the contact to, to open, we want that yeah. to spring open and so this uh, armature also has a, a spring attached to it, a mechanical okay. spring so when the magnetic field is switched off it's pushed back up to its okay. off position. Okay, brilliant. Thanks very much, Joe. Thank you. So then, let's go back to the three-phase distribution board now. So we're going to take power from L1, L2 and L3 through to the contactor. And then that's going to feed the banks of lights. So we don't know what size circuit breaker we're going to use now at the moment. So I'm just going to I'll label those in a minute. And notice these are three individual circuit breakers. They are not a three-phase circuit breaker. They are three individual phase, three individual circuit breakers, but they are using all three phases. So let's go take our first line from L1, and we're going to take that into the contactor. In particular, when you look at a contactor, this is a three-pole contactor meaning that there are three poles, there are three contacts. So, every contactor, the incoming side will be labelled one for the first one, the outgoing side is labelled two, three incoming, four outgoing, five incoming, six outgoing. So we've got our line conductor for L1 coming through to this first contact. L2 is going to come into our second contact, and quite simply, L3 is coming into our third contact. From the outgoing side, from 2, 4 and 6, we are going to be simply just taking these to the banks of lights that we have. We also need to take a neutral from a returning neutral to come back to the distribution board. Now obviously we need to take three individual neutrals back, but just for the ease of the, um, the, the diagram, so it doesn't get, become too messy, I'm just going to simulate it through one neutral but there would be three individual neutrals coming back. And we would want to dress these on this side of the neutral, of this side of the distribution board onto this neutral terminal because it's this side that the outgoing line conductors are going on. When we did this one, when we fed the, when we fed the two way switch in, which controlled the coil, we went from this side, so we bring the neutral back to this side. It just keeps the, um, it keeps the, distribution board um, dressed nicely and obvious to anyone that's going to be looking at it in the future. Okay, let's say for example, and I'm not going to do any calculations, but let's just say these are banks of fluorescent lighting and let's say each set is drawing 18 amps. Eighteen amps. These switches I've only rated at 10 amps each. So for this circuit, drawing 18 amps, we're probably going to install maybe a 20 amp circuit breaker. So that'll be a 20 amp circuit breaker for each. So then we've brought Gaz in now to um, help, help us talk through the circuit. So then Gaz, at the moment we've got our two-way switching. Yes. That's operating the coil. Okay. We've now got our 20 amp circuit breakers 
feed in the contactor. Okay. And they are going to three banks of light. So as we look at it at the moment, would I, if I came into the building, are yep. currently the lamps in that warehouse fully illuminated? Are we on at the moment as we look um, at the circuit? No, no not, not at the moment. No. Okay, so we, we follow it through from just the six amp control circuit. Yep. So we follow it through to our first switch and through, yeah, we can clearly see that we're, not, we're not on. So it's not it on. won't matter, will it, which one of the switches we alter the blade? No, so no. If we alter the blade here, you can just have a look and see what's happening then. So now, We've actually energized the line conductor, which is a switching line onto yep. one side of the- yeah, The coil. Yeah, within the yep. contactor itself. The other side is connected to neutral. Neutral. And Joe clearly explained that we're creating now a magnetic field. Magnetic field. field. Pulls the armature down and brings these contacts into play. So effectively, these blades have now become shut. Yeah, so these have now moved downwards. So I'll just simulate that with a connection there. Yep. And as they have moved downwards, okay. they have made a clunk. You know that noise yeah. when you walk into a factory and you press the switches and there's a big clunk or a click, and that's the armature pulling down of the contacts making. And I think we've got a rig downstairs that this is gonna continue on yeah. to, or you're actually yeah. gonna show us that physically yeah. in the workshop. Yeah. So now all of a sudden we've put effectively a switching line, which we've now closed it. We've put a switching line onto the bank of lights. Yep. The other side of the lights are connected to individual neutrals. Yep. Yeah, we know the CPC would be in place. So all of these lamps or loads, whatever we've got in the actual factory themselves have now been energized, is that true? That's right, yeah, so all three of them. So, so and we're talking at a, a current, what sort of current are we drawing here? Um, so th three lots of 18, 50, 50 54 amps. 54 amps. So we, we're actually turned on 54 amps of drawing load. With a 6 amp circuit breaker. We just switches at a rate of 10 amps. 10 amps. Because yeah. we've actually used a contactor. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's the beauty of it. So that is the beauty of it. And the other beauty of it, isn't this part of, or similar to an assessment we're going to have to carry out with yeah. our learners? Yeah, for some of our level, for our level 3 learners, it's similar to one of the assessments. So this will help them um, um, with that assessment. Good. So we can see simply how using a contactor, uh, a simple switching circuit that we can actually turn on multiple loads of vastly larger current than the, actually the switch can control, because yep. it isn't the switch controlling it, it's the cause of the contactor when they're energized from yeah. the magnetic field. Yeah. Can we just operate the other switch maybe? Yeah, so if we did this one, so we'll take this one back out. Hopefully we can now see when we draw it through, the line conductor comes to the first switch, it comes through and now we've de-energized the coil. So the energy, the, the, the so coil is now- We've got a switching line there, yeah. That's it. So, under spring pressure, like Joe explained, the armature springs back, yeah. which breaks these contacts, which opens these contacts. Again, you'll hear a clunk or a click. Yeah. They come up, they cut the power going through to each light. So the and many lights off. in a work, uh, workshop yeah. or a warehouse have yeah. now, all the lights have gone off. Yeah. Simply by turning the switches, you walk out the building yeah. pocket off. Yeah. It's fantastic. So, We'd like to thank you, Matt, for that, for going right. through that contact control, but we're going to take that one now down into the workshop, aren't we? We're going yes, to actually yeah. do a practical exercise with it, and we'll actually live and we'll, we'll hear this clunking noise that you keep talking yeah. about, yeah. and we'll see a, a load coming on switch from a different circuit. Yeah. So how do we end it, Matt? Hope this video has been, been some, some help. help.